Okay, Dave, and what can you tell us about the uh, impact that offshore oil and gas exploration do on the coastline? Well, uh, offshore, offshore operations um, can be supported from a distance. So if, for instance, you have one well to drill off the west of Ireland, you can bring in the rig from the North Sea, you can bring in a crew with it. You, the only impact that that operation is going to have on uh, Irish coastal activity is perhaps by uh, support vessels out of um, a nearby port or so on. It's only when you get a, a, an oil province developed and you have op going on continually, as for instance in the North Sea since the 1970s. So they've 40 years and, and therefore what were quite um, sleepy almost uh, offshore uh, um, ports along the uh, UK coastline, like Aberdeen, for instance, have become a hub for the oil industry, so that um, helicopter bases, supply bases, uh, rig repair units, all kinds of things have so grown it changes, up there. It changes the appearance of and, the coast and, and, and have the built up, and it's become and and the same in in. Uh, in Norway, with uh, towns like Stavanger and Bergen, um, have had the same uh, impact, the, the offshore operation. But in Ireland, that hasn't happened because, unfortunately, although there was high enthusiasm in the 1970s, um, the geology did not turn out to be North Sea geology. Now, that doesn't mean to say we've no oil, but it means that the sort of targets that people were pursuing at that time didn't turn out to be prolific oil producers. And therefore, the people lost interest and we didn't get this continuity of activity. Uh, as a result, really the only onshore facilities that one can point to and say that that's due to the oil industry. Um, one of them is the terminal that the main discovery of um, the south, the Kinsale head a gas field and a number of subsidiary fields were brought in to in Strand near uh, at the mouth of Cork Harbour. And and there's a terminal at Inch that has uh, been working for the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, nearby, but you're saying not... saying terminal is where the, where the tankers dock to offload oil, or is there a pipeline running from it's the... It's a pipeline, uh, it's a pipeline coming in from the platform on Kinsale mm -hmm. head and into Inch. And, and then it's distributed from from there into the national grid of, of uh, gas pipe. Mm -hmm. um, nearby in Cork Harbour, but not related at all, is, a, is the uh, Whitegate refinery, which um, uh, refines um, a portion of, of Irish uh, needs for refined products in uh, oil products. Um, but that, that is isn't... It, that's the only one in Ireland. Mm. That's the only refinery in Ireland. And of course, all the material, the feedstock for that, mm -hmm. is brought in. Does it produce final products like petrol and diesel? Yeah, it, it, it does. But it, it, everything that it produces has, has to be, first of all, brought in as crude oil. Mm -hmm. and, and there's no, uh, currently, no commercial offshore development of oil. There are gas mm -hmm. developments but no oil. And what are the reasons for that? Is it purely due to geology or is it because this difficult weather conditions or why is that? Why the success rate is so low in, in Irish I hate, waters? I hate to say this as a geologist but it's mainly chance really. 
the um, the uh, structures that were available for drilling in the Celtic Sea happened to be uh, above or close to source rocks that produce gas. Mm -hmm. And much the same was true of the discovery made in the 1990s and recently um, brought ashore and now entering the, uh, the national gas system uh, at, Co at the Corrib field uh, offshore Mayo. Um, and it's um, uh, an unusual field in the sense that it's much like the fields in the North Sea, in the Southern North Sea, in that the reservoir rock is was originally a, a desert uh, onshore uh, deposit um, and it's been subsequently buried into the deep offshore and but it is fed from uh, carboniferous coal beds beneath mm -hmm. the, and, and these again are, are more likely to produce gas now there are oil prospects around the um, island and there have been quite a few um, discoveries that were very promising but in the event either turned out to be too small or too complex at the time to, to develop. Um, but one still has hope and in that regard, as I said, the initial wave of interest in the Irish offshore and particularly off the west coast was in North Sea look-alike fields. The, the people were hunting for another North Sea and, and for a time euphoria uh, reigned and people really did think they were going to find another North Sea off our western shore. Um, but gradually okay, that, that was turned out not to be the case but you know the people get new ideas about exploration and in the last decade or so there have been a number of discoveries offshore West Africa in a different sort of um, rock and a different uh, environment a geological environment and people, um, and and also there have been discoveries, different set of discoveries of eastern Canada again in rather different uh, geological settings, and people are now looking at our Atlantic seaboard, the Porcupine Basin, for instance, and thinking mm, there are possibilities of doing that same thing. There are rocks that look like the West African rocks or mm. like the East Canadian rocks. So there might be and, something there. There might yeah. be something there. As a result, much of Porcupine is currently under license. Um, I think to, it's under license, but is to, there any drilling taking place? Well, uh, I mean, time will tell. People are shooting seismic, but eventually, of course, the only test will be when they start drilling and probably the first drilling might take place this year and uh, there should be another few wells in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. well, you're saying people shooting seismics, are this mainly overseas companies or are there Irish companies which are doing some exploration? Most of the companies um, are from overseas, um, particularly in the deeper water areas in the South Porcupine which require um, a lot of resource mm -hmm. um, and, and therefore you see the major oil companies have recently come into that area. But the original wave of, of interest in porcupine, and this is common around the world, the small companies are swifter to move. They, they get the idea and they can act they don't have to go through 
uh, committees and boards and yeah. so forth, they can make a snap decision to get a, a license here or there. As a result, the smaller companies, and this is worldwide, have tended to be the first ones into new areas and dream up new plays and new ideas and, and then sell them to the to the bigger ones, to, to the bigger fellows who've got the resource to both drill and develop, and and this was true in in Porcupine, where um, uh, Irish uh, companies, small Irish companies, uh, got involved, and small UK companies got involved in in <coughs> in leading the charge into this new area, and uh, uh, time will tell whether we end up with uh, uh, an oil province uh, off our west coast. Yeah.